As I walked into the boardroom, I saw this long table with people sitting at every seat. I saw expensive things, the Mona Lisa, a $500,000 vase, and various collectible platters. The room was infused with lavender scent, and all I could hear was chatter, 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 chatter. I wore this designer dark pink pantsuit made by my personal seamstress because I'm so extra. And I also wore black high heels made by my personal shoemaker. After talking about work stuff for 45 minutes, my lunch arrives on a robot server. I ordered steak and mashed potatoes with the Shirley Temple and extra cherries. After lunch, I signed a $100 million contract. Then suddenly, poof, I wake up and I try not to remember that I had school that day. That was just an excerpt of my third book, Road to the Crown, Volume 2. Now you're probably wondering, how does an 11-year-old already have not one, not two, but three books published? But I'm not here to talk about my books. I'm here to talk about one word, pageantry. The three unexpected consequences of pageantry. The first one is that pageantry turns friendships into nationwide networks. When I was just six years old, I met my best friend, Salima, in New York City. Until this day, we're still friends. But even though we live thousands of miles apart, we still make time to hang out with each other. Just last week, she called me and she was like, hey girl, I'm in town, wanna hang out? And we hung out. And not only do I have friends from New York City, but I also have friends from all across the US. Just last year, I collaborated with 17 other pageant girls to create my first book project. And with that book project, I am able to share, we are able to share to boys and girls from all across the globe what pageantry is really about. And what I learned is that friendships are valuable and you should always cherish them. The second unexpected consequence is that pageantry turns crowns into coins, which means money, even though I never got to spend any of it. A couple years ago, I started making Instagram reels about my natural hair and how I grew to love it. Because when I was younger, I used to not like my curly hair. And I always, always wanted it to be straightened, but my mom always said no. So I started making those reels to teach other boys and girls how to love themselves just the way God made them to be. And guess what? The beauty brand Dove reached out to me and they wanted me to become a partner with them for the new campaign as early as five to spread awareness about the Crown Act. And what I learned is that you don't have to become a grown up to start making your own money. You can start right now. The third unexpected consequence of pageantry is that pageantry turns loss into learning that builds confidence. When I was four years old, I had my very first speaking event at my church. I was really nervous. It was around Black History Month, and the only thing that I knew is that if I did the speech, I'd get M&Ms after. When I was six years old, I had another speaking event at another church, and there was hundreds of people. I was really, really nervous. I had to say my superhero speech, and I just didn't want to. I just wanted to go home. So when I got up on the stage, I didn't speak. So my mom had to say the speech for me. When I was nine years old, I had a national competition. I was in the final. There was five girls, and I was the first one up. I had a look good. I had another designer outfit on, and I was ready. I was ready to win. I was confident. So once I got up to the podium, I forgot my speech, and I got first runner up. But this year, I competed in a regional oratorical competition in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. But even though I had to learn the whole speech in my car on the way there, I still won in another designer outfit. <laughs> so from all those losses, mess ups, and slip ups, I was able to learn from all of those and become a better public speaker. And I'm up here today being able to talk to you all confidently. Last week, I competed in the Miss Texas preteen pageant. And I've competed in it before, and I've always gotten first runner up. But this year, I was like, I'm going to win this. 
I'm gonna I'm do good. And I had an amazing wardrobe that week. I looked good <laughs> in some designer outfits. So I won all my optionals. So when it came to the finale, I was ready, I was confident. I made it into the top 15 and they were calling the runners up and the winner. So, guess what happened? I got first winner up. But it's okay, because I'll be going to the national level rocking the All-American title. But from that, I learned that pageants aren't just about the trophies, the banners, the awards, the money. It's about the friends you gain, the opportunities that you earn, and the confidence that you build. And pageants aren't just for girls. You can get guys involved in too. Some of the best directors, MCs, coaches, hair makeup artists are guys. And the person that designed my outfit was actually a guy. <laughs> so I encourage you to get your children involved in pageants because it can change their life like it changed mine. Thank you. <laughs>